Thanks very much for staying with us. Time now for Eye on Africa with me, Georgia Calvin-Smith. Tonight, vote counting is kicked off in Mozambique after fears of a violent general election day turned out to be unfounded. Despite some allegations of vote rigging, incumbent leader Felipe Nusi is widely expected to be re-elected. We hear from a correspondent in Maputo. Also, dozens of tortured captives are freed from an Islamic school in the hometown of Nigeria's president. It's the second such rescue in the country in less than a month. President Mohamedou Buhari's promised a crackdown on abuse in religious institutions. And small cannabis farmers in Morocco's Rift Mountain say that they're being edged out by bigger producers who can afford to grow a new hybrid that needs more complex irrigation and sells for less. The industry is illegal but is key to the economy of the region. We take a closer look. But first, despite one of the most violent election campaigns in Mozambique's history, voting day on Tuesday turned out to be pretty peaceful. Vote counting has begun after the electorate turned out to choose a president. Incumbent Felipe Nusi is predicted to win. His ruling Frelimo party hasn't lost an election since independence in 1975. The opposition Renamo party, though, has raised some concerns about vote rigging. Uh, Frank Hersey followed the day for us in Maputo. He tells us more about how the day panned out and about those concerns about security. Things have been much calmer to the build-up to the election and we're actually here in a observer sort of base camp on the edge of Maputo where observers are coming together and they're, they're sharing their findings. So we quite unusually have a figure for how calm it's been. In the polling stations where they've been observing, they found that it was calm in 95% of them. Um, it could have been even calmer in some because there are reports coming in that one of the provinces here in Mozambique actually added 300 thousand extra voters to the electoral register. These people don't appear on the census, so we're not sure where they're from. And there could even have been entire polling stations dedicated to them with nobody turning up, just ghosts. And then another thing that we have had today was that there was a little, there were little touches of violence here and there. The head of the opposition party, Renamo, he's called Osofa Mamade, he went back to his hometown to vote and a fight broke out among polling station staff which was caught on live TV. He placed his vote, but then he took to local media to declare that, looking what's going on there, he was alleging there was ballot stuffing going on in his own polling station. He's challenged the president, President Nusi, to that he will not accept the results as they're clearly manipulation. We've had another problem as well with vote, um, observer accreditation. Some 3,000 independent observers haven't had their accreditation, so it could be a while till we get a full picture. So overall, how important are these particular elections? What, what are, what's at stake here? Well, they're important in two, in two main ways. There's the, the political side and the economic side. Politically, this should be an important stage in the ongoing peace process. It's a compromise on both sides, the Renamo and the ruling Frelimo. Um, Frelimo is meant to be compromising by allowing some decentralization of power. We're seeing provincial governors being selected in these elections as well, which should see some important seats going to the opposition. On the other side, Renamo should be giving up some of its arms. Its, its fighters, it still has arms, but its fighters should be giving up those arms and joining the regular army. So we could be seeing some compromise. Economically, Mozambique could be in for some large changes. There are huge gas reserves off the coast of the country and there are some $50 billion worth of contracts coming through. And so really, it's, there's a high level of unemployment people and when people have been going to the polling stations, that's been on their minds as well. So under the current president, President Yusi, the economy, economic growth has dropped dramatically. And so what people want now is whoever comes into power, there should be some changes. Mozambicans have relied on fishing for centuries, but now some are calling the country the Qatar of Africa. The discovery of enormous gas reserves will make it the continent's biggest producer, bringing in $50 billion of investment from multinational energy companies. One local set to set to profit are lawyers like Izalcio Mahanjane. He explains how all legal issues will have to be dealt with by local lawyers. And that's not the only opportunity for Mozambicans. In, in some business, there will, there will be also already, always a, a joint venture need. When you go to the construction, 
uh, for public war, for public construction, we, you need a joint venture because uh, the Mozambicans must own at least 51%. Construction is booming, with ultra-high prices for some buildings and the associated corruption, a topic that's become one of the themes of the campaign. The sitting president is up against three other candidates. Many seem sure who's going to win, but opinion polls are forbidden. I will be fooled if I, if I say uh, the, this part will win or that will won't because I don't have data. The ruling party has highlighted recent infrastructure projects in its campaigning, such as this bridge built by the Chinese. It's the longest suspension bridge in Africa, but the toll means it's little used. We have the um, basic uh, colonial uh, structures or architectures. Mapuru is, uh, is growing. It's growing on two sides, organized one side or the organized side. And yeah, there is the, the, there's two Maputos. This other Maputo has to be taken seriously as the country's informal sector makes up 65% of the economy. We can easily see that uh, the most, most of the population are living in the rural world. But the elections are just as important here. What I'd like is for the next president to sort out the floor of this market. Look at it. Yes, I believe the election could change our lives. Isalcio believes this too. He'll be among the thousands of local observers monitoring these critical elections. That report there for us from Maputo by Frank Hersey. Now, in other news, hundreds of men and boys have been held captive at an Islamic school in Nigeria where they were allegedly systematically abused. Dozens were freed during a police raid on Monday evening. It is, though, the second such group to be discovered in degrading conditions at an Islamic centre in the country in less than a month. President Mohamedou Buhari has vowed to crack down on abuse at religious institutions. Nicola Shamal tells us more. Some of them are just boys. Others are a bit older. The police in Katsina, the northwestern home state of President Mohamedou Buhari, said they had rescued nearly 70 people. They were in an establishment that was supposed to be an Islamic school. I was tortured every day. Look at my mouth and gums. It was so bad I even fainted three times. Neighbours said that families had sent unruly men and boys there, believing the Islamic facility would discipline them. They beat us. They abused us and punished us. They always did this. Officially, they say they are teaching us, but it's not true. Last month, in the neighboring state of Kaduna, more than 300 boys and men were rescued from a similar Islamic school. For years now, such institutions have been accused of abusing children and sometimes forcing them to beg on the streets of cities in the north. In June, President Buhari, who is a Muslim, said the government planned to ban these schools, but that they would not do so immediately. In other news, Jacob Zuma's corruption trial has been delayed again. The former South African president says that he will be appealing against the High Court's rejection of his bid to have 16 charges of fraud, graft and racketeering dismissed. Now, Zuma is accused of having taken bribes when he was deputy president for a $3.4 billion arms deal back in 1999. The case has dragged on now for over 15 years. He denies the charges. Zuma was forced to resign as president last year after nine years in power that were dogged by scandal and accusations of corruption. Meanwhile, rescue workers in Ethiopia continued on Tuesday to try to get to the bodies of those killed in a landslide that happened on Sunday. At least 22 people died in the remote area of Konta. By Tuesday afternoon, at least 17 bodies had been recovered. The mountainside came down on the community after 10 hours of heavy rain. Families in the area are being relocated as authorities are worried that locals will still be at risk as the downpours continue. Now, although it's illegal to cultivate, sell or smoke cannabis in Morocco, the drug industry around the Rift Mountains is still very lively. It's where most of the country's cannabis crops are grown. Small-scale farmers there say that they are increasingly being edged out by bigger producers who can afford to irrigate an increasingly popular but thirsty new hybrid crop called Critical. Nicola Chamat tells us more. Farmers have been growing cannabis in northern Morocco for centuries. But increasingly, the local variety is being replaced by a foreign hybrid called Critical. 
cannabis is illegal in Morocco, but its production is tolerated by the authorities. Critical was created in a laboratory in the Netherlands. The problem for small producers is that critical sells for less money and it needs much more water to grow. The new kind is not adapted for small farmers like us. We don't have enough water. If you have a lot of water and an irrigation system and labourers, you will have large crops, but small farmers like me, we only grow the local kind. Small farmers don't have the means to buy the seeds or the irrigation system. They have to work for big producers who have imposed critical on the market. Critical is in high demand in Europe. Foreigners come here to give you the seeds to plant. They say they'll buy the whole crop if it grows well. You'll earn a lot of money because everyone wants it, especially if you know drug traffickers. In northern Morocco, a mountainous region known for its poor soil, experts say the production of cannabis provides a livelihood for up to 140,000 people. Well, that's it for Iron Africa for now. Thanks for joining us. And do so again if you can. Take care.